You're listening to FirstAmendmentRadio.com worldwide. Freedom is never free. We need your support today at FirstAmendmentRadio.com. The program you are listening to is 100% sponsored by you, the listener, on this First Amendment Rights Media channel. You will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network. There's a good reason for that. Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. So without your help, these programs cannot continue on Internet or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, we ask you to give. If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, we ask you to give. If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis, as if giving a tithe for Missionary Radio. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our Listen and Schedule pages on the Internet. Then, when you subscribe, we will send you the last quarterly MP3 CD of that program immediately and continue to do so with each new quarter. We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host, cause, and anywhere else the Spirit may lead you. Do all to the glory of our God and Creator, for His holy nation, the only kingdom that will last forever. Thank you for listening. Well, greetings everyone and welcome to the Law Hour and Editorial Review. Now, the Law Hour is an educational service brought to you in the public interest. I'm your narrator, Judy Gordon. Now, the Law Hour and editorial review is heard nationally and internationally seven days a week here in the United States and around the world in more than 120 countries worldwide over the Internet. For more information about the Law Hour and editorial review, please visit our webpage at georgegordonlaw.org. Again, that's georgegordonlaw.org. Now, the Law Hour and Editorial Review brings you important information about law, science, education, politics, religion, health, history, economics, news, and current events. Hey, we've been talking about a time when there are no doctors. That's a time that's coming up. Reading the international forecaster, I see QE2 is underway. That's a direct infusion of money created out of thin air into the economy. They tell us they're going to put in $600 billion. Six hundred billion won't do the job. They're going to need two and a half trillion, and they're going to put in two and a half trillion. They're going to increase the money supply. That won't do the job either. Next year they'll put in another two and a half trillion. They're going to increase the money supply by something on the order of five and a half trillion dollars over the next 24 to 36 months. That's going to bring about hyperinflation, and they've decided, the powers that be, that we're going to have hyperinflation rather than deflation. <clears throat> I don't make these rules. I don't make these policies. I'm just here to report that that's what they're talking about. And I don't have any reason to doubt them, and that's what they're doing. Now, when you have hyperinflation, it, <clears throat> it puts plenty of money out there into circulation. Whether you have plenty of money or not may be another, another story, but there will be plenty of money out there in the, in the economy. And it will it'll bid up the prices and drive all the goods off the shelf. And at some point in time, the people like the Chinese, Japanese, and South Koreans, and Formosans, and Filipinos, and others that are making all these goods and shipping them into the United States and not getting paid for them are going to stop shipping those goods that they're not getting paid for anyway because they're not getting paid. And then we're going to have a drastic shortage of all goods. <clears throat> That'll translate into a shortage of money. And then you're going to have the same health problems that you've got today with no money to pay for them. And like as not, you won't have a job either. 
But there's a solution to this. And back in the olden days, we used to have natural home remedies. <clears throat> but <clears throat> that's what I talked about last week, was the natural home remedies. Now, <clears throat> let's take a look at the international forecaster. When there's no doctors available, what do you do to solve these kinds of problems, major problems? And in this case, <clears throat> we can talk about liver disease. Or we can talk about poisoning of the system, and up until now I've been talking about starvation. Remember, we, we've been discussing the cause of disease, and the cause of disease is starvation or toxicity. Now, sometimes you're eating poison, and it tastes real good, and you think that it's good food, but in reality, you're, you're poisoning yourself. And there's a substance here called an addiction to white powder written by Wendy Wilson here in the International Forecaster that deals with sugar. Sugar is an addictive drug. And we're all addicted to it, whether we like it or not, because they put sugar in just about everything. When you go to the supermarket, just pick up the package and look at the, at the ingredients on the label. And the thing that the most of is contained in the package is number one. So if you're looking at uh, number one, let's say a, a, a cake or a pie, they'll put on their uh, blackberries. That's, that's the number one item in here is blackberries. And the second thing maybe is white flour. And then the third thing in there maybe is whole wheat flour. And then maybe the fourth thing in there will be sugar or high fructose corn syrup or something like that, some kind of sweetener. And it's it's in the pies and the cakes and the in the in the cupcakes. It's in the it's in the package of uh, noodles and, and and so on. And you can't get away from it because that's what's in the package. And we're all used to it and we all like it because it tastes real good. But it's a toxic substance. It's a poison. And it builds up over time in our system. It gives us diabetes, but it gives us a whole host and plethora of other problems as well. And a question, of course, arises when we get to the point where we can't afford the doctor and we're applying our natural home remedies as best we can. <clears throat> what are we going to do about the sugar toxicity in the body? We'll listen to the story. What is more deadly than cocaine? <clears throat> well, America has a white powder addiction, and it isn't from any illegal street drug. This drug is sold everywhere, and nearly every American consumes two to three pounds of this white powder every week. It is sugar, and it comes in many forms. Highly refined sucrose called table sugar, dextrose, corn sugar, and high fructose corn syrup. It's in your breakfast cereal. It's in your yogurt, peanut butter, ketchup, and toothpaste. And unless you strive mightily to avoid it and, if, and read the product labels, you're going to find sugar or artificial sweeteners in nearly every package. There's one thing that's worse than sugar, and that's the artificial sweeteners. I've reported on that to you a number of times. You want to avoid low calorie, and that's artificial sweeteners. That's a deadly toxic poison, and that's a story oven by itself. <clears throat> you can go back in our archives and pick up uh, aspartame, I think is the name of the program, and, and uh, we'll explain that one to you. But... This sugar oven by itself, whether it's high fructose corn syrup, corn syrup, or table sugar, those are also poisons, but they're not as bad as the artificial sweetener. So it's like the red death pill or the green death pill. Which one did you want? Well, we recommend the green death pill if there's a choice. But it would be better if you took the white life pill and let the red and the green death pills lay. Now some signs of addiction to this white powder. One of the true signs of an addiction is that your demand increases. You've got to have it and you've got to have more of it. And like a junkie on street drugs, we want more and more. In the last 20 years, Americans have increased their consumption of sugar from 26 pounds to 135 pounds a year. About 110 years ago, the average person consumed just five pounds of sugar per, per year. So going back to 1900, the average Joe Sixpack now was taking one five-pound package of sugar per year. 
per person. Well, that increased to 26 pounds, you know, some 20 years ago. Now we're up to 135 pounds per person per year. And we're paying a, we're paying a pretty hefty price for that. Bad health and diabetes is the, is the outcome of it. Every decision we make now has an outcome, has a, has a result. Now, if you want to eat, if you want to eat 135 pounds of sugar a year, that's fine. No problem. But there's going to be a consequence to that. And if you're prepared for the consequence and you're happy with the outcome, well, then stick with the program. You can't, you can't miss. If you don't want diabetes and if you, if you want to improve your health, then you're going to have to cut down on the amount of sugar you eat. Now, most of us aren't going to do that, and we're going to develop symptoms. And when these symptoms develop, you're going to have a choice to make. Now, i got a boy. He's got an aneurysm. And he smokes, and his problem is the is the nicotine. Nicotine is a is a poison, and it's a it's a, a good poison. I mean, it's a poison that those people that smoke really like it. it. That's good stuff. It's like cocaine. It's 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 good. You'll you'll love it. But it destroys the vitamin C, vitamin A, and uh, other vitamins in your body. And as a result of that. In his case, he's developed an aneurysm, and the smoking is going to kill him. He's going to quit smoking. We just don't know when, before or after he dies. My grandmother smoked for 70 years in a pack of camel studs every day, and then she died at age 88. Now, that was, that was good, but, you know, when she was young, she, was, she wasn't exposed to uh, bad air, bad water. She had clean air, clean water. For most of her life. Now, when we're we're out here in the society, we live in Los Angeles. We're drinking bad water. We're drinking uh, way too much sugar, soda pop, and so on, debilitating our bodies with toxins to begin with, and we're not going to last to be 85 or 88 years old as a result of it. And uh, that boy isn't isn't either. So I'm going to have to get busy and and get a burial plot ready for him because at some point in time the aneurysm is going to pop that's going to kill him and then and then everybody will be sad because he's in his 40s and we'll all be sitting around saying oh why why did it have to happen you know because he wouldn't have it any other way. that's what the bottom line is we're we're going to have our sugar we're going to have our cigarettes we're going to have our gasoline I mean, there's certain things that americans can't live without and uh, alcohol, sugar, tobacco, and uh, gasoline are four of them. And by God, take one of those away, there'll be a revolution. Now, as a result of that, there's a consequence. And so Wendy Wilson's pointing out here is that, or what she's pointing out here is that the consumption of sugar here is it has a toxic effect on your body, just like nicotine or any other poison. You know, at some point in time, feels good. Smells good, tastes good. We like it, but at some point in time, it's going to cause death. Now, the side effects from sugar. The sugar drug has many side effects. A hundred years ago, cancer and heart disease were practically unknown. Using sugar is equal to a 300-pound gorilla burdening your metabolic system. And when you eat sugar, it affects how foods are digested and processed by your body. Foods with high sugar content or a high glycemic index spike the blood glucose levels in the pancreas must scramble to lower the blood sugar with insulin, which also triggers the storage of fat. High sugar foods promote rapid weight gain and elevate our triglycerides, which contribute to cardiovascular disease. So when you're consuming sugar, your body's dealing with damage control, and the drawback is this inhibits the release of hormones, and it depresses the natural immune system. So you put your pancreas, liver, and cardiovascular system on a roller coaster ride with rapid fluctuations of blood sugar levels, and this puts enormous stress on your body. Foods with a low glycemic index allow the body to slowly digest and absorb food, offering a healthier infusion of natural sugars and nutrients into your body. So the next time someone brings jelly donuts to the breakfast meeting and says, 
What harm could come from eating one donut? Well, now you know what havoc it can reap upon your metabolic system. Now some research has been done, and a study done at Princeton University compared sweeteners, and they found that high fructose corn syrup promotes more of a significant weight gain and accumulation of abnormal body fat, especially around your abdomen. Apparently, it causes more of a rise in blood fats, triglycerides, and it's blamed for the obesity trend in the United States. Now, the research team conducted their research with lab animals, and the study was published in the February 26th issue of the Journal of Pharmacology, Biochemistry, and Behavior. According to research from Duke University Medical Center, this high fructose corn syrup causes us to have a fatty liver with scarring and fibrosis of the liver. Now, their research was published in the Journal of Hepatology in 2008. Repeated studies by Duke in May of 2010 found similar results. And there's also some disputed data that when corn syrup was first introduced to the American market, that it did not secure FDA approval based on tests indicating that it was detrimental to the human pancreas and liver. So what overturned this ruling? The sugar cartel. The sugar cartel can be very influential. Now, sugar is a robber. When you eat sugar, it competes for some vital nutrients in your system. For example, your immune system needs vitamin C in order to manufacture white blood cells to fight infection. It also fights viruses and cancer. Well, sugar has a similar, very similar chemical marker, and it tries to enter your cells before the vitamin C does. So when you eat sugar, you can lower your vitamin C level by 75%. And that has the effect, then, to lower your immune system by as much as 75%. Sugar offers the body no vitamins, no minerals, and therefore will drain existing nutritional stores. Sugar will break into your metabolic banks of fatty acids, amino acids, healthy cholesterol, and rob them all. When these nutritional banks are cleaned out, your body struggles to metabolize fat and cholesterol, creating higher serum triglycerides, cholesterol, and fatty acids. This then stimulates the storage of high concentrations of fat around your organs, putting pressure on your organs and creating fatty folds of tissue. Many physicians and organizations, such as the American Dietetic Association and American Diabetic Association, report that sugar is one of the major contributors to degenerative disease. Sugar holds your life hostage by controlling your hormones, your appetite, your mood, muscle growth, fertility, mental health, and eventually your economic resources. You'll be so busy keeping doctor's appointments, popping pills, and having tests that you won't have time or money for much else. So let's pause here and think for a moment. We've gone from five pounds a year over a period of 100 years, the last century, to about 135 pounds. It's a 130-pound increase per person. At the same time, we've seen a dramatic increase in diabetes, heart disease, stroke, and cancer. Now, modern medicine has tied sugar to these diseases. Now, you don't see Katie Couric or Brian Williams coming on the air in their health segments on the news every night telling you about these connecting links over here. They tell you about, hey, we're out here searching for a cure to cancer, and uh, we want you to march on cancer and join up with us and donate your money and pay your taxes. <clears throat> but the, the root cause of this thing over here now is sugar. So I thought I'd report that to you. Because the day's going to come when you're not going to have a doctor that's going to give you the pills and you're not going to have the resources to buy it. And so now you'll be faced with a crisis just like my son is. Do I want to quit smoking or do I want to die? The answer for most of you will be, I want to die. So you will continue smoking. 
you will continue eating the white sugar. But I wanted to tell you that there is a solution to the problem. And when you get to that crisis, then you, you know, now that you've heard this program, now you can make a decision. It probably will be the wrong decision, but then it's your decision to make. And so now you've got a choice. Whereas before, nobody told you about the sugar problem. And if you didn't know there was a problem, you couldn't correct it. And there's a little kicker for you. Over the past 20 years, the consumption of, of soda pop in the United States has doubled. Today, the average American drinks twice as much soda pop today than he did 20 years ago. In that same 20-year period, the incidence of diabetes has doubled. Now, a can of soda pop, if it's an average run-of-the-mill Coke or Pepsi, has nine teaspoons of sugar in it. Nine. That's nine teaspoons of sugar. Now, your body can handle three teaspoons of sugar every 24 hours. So if you want to know what your digestive rate is, it's three teaspoons in 24 hours. So you're going to load it up now <clears throat> with nine. That's just from one Coke. I had a guy in here one time. He and his wife would come in here in the morning to class, 9 o'clock, with a 12-pack of Coca-Cola. And those two people would drink those 12 Cokes by lunch. We would break for lunch at 1 o'clock. <clears throat> we break from, for lunch at 1, come back at 2.30. And that old boy come back at 2.30 with another 12-pack of Coke. And when we broke at 5.30, they'd have consumed the other one. Now, that's 24 Cokes a day for the two of them. Now, I don't know if that boy's still alive or not. He shouldn't be. <clears throat> you know, that's you're overloading your body with sugar to such a degree that it just simply can't, uh, can't handle it. Your pancreas can't make enough insulin to do that kind of work. <clears throat> so you should take that up with God in the judgment and say, hey, why you, why'd you make that sugar taste so good and those Brussels sprouts and broccoli taste so bad? I don't know. You'll have to ask the boss himself. But now, at least you have been informed, haven't you? Now, I try to drink one or two soda pops a year just so I can keep in practice. And I used to drink uh, two or three a day. Younger, I don't know if I, if I irreparably harmed my body. I might have. I couldn't tell. But anyway, one day I woke up and I said, you know, I think I'll quit smoking. And I think I'll quit drinking soda pop. Now, that doesn't mean I quit quit eating sugar. You know, I'm going to eat a pie. Tomorrow, you know, I'm going to eat a pie. And when I eat that pie, there's going to be a ton of sugar in it. <clears throat> but I'm not eating near as much as I used to eat. <clears throat> and I'm not down to zero. I'm not suggesting that, you know, let's go down to five pounds a year. Let's go down to zero pounds of sugar per year. That isn't going to happen. But the next time you know some somebody wants to tempt you with a Coke or they want to tempt you with a Krispy Kreme donut or something like that, it might give you a little bit more impetus to say, no, nah, I think I'm getting more than enough sugar already. I don't need to add to it. Now, science tells us that no matter what disease that you're concerned with, whether that's cancer, osteoporosis, heart disease, or the common cold, Disease is all boiled down to the cell and molecular structure or level. Insulin affects the metabolic system, and at this level, you'll even control it. And with that said, you have a say in whether you will develop degenerative disease. Now, if you do just one thing in your diet, and that is to eliminate as much refined sugar as you, as you can do, you're going to extend your life, and you're going to enhance the quality of your life, and you're going to look and feel younger longer at the same time. Now, there are several natural products that God has put here to help you break this sugar addiction. I like to call them sugar antidotes. Celtic sea salt, that is unprocessed sea salt, not only contains 84 micro mineral nutrients, but it also helps you calm your sweet tooth. This kind of salt does not promote hypertension. To help your liver regenerate and heal, I use milk thistle tincture, one of the organ cleanses for optimum health, to help regulate blood sugar. And I use white juniper berries or fenugreek herb. And you'll find 
Celtic sea salt, milk thistle tincture, diabetic formula, and diabetic formula F at Apothecary Herbs. And you can call toll free and there's a number here. Now, <clears throat> this uh, is a section that comes out of the International Forecaster. Now, remember, I'm promoting the International Forecaster this week. And with particular emphasis on the health section. Every week they put out two issues. It's 104 a year. And, and he might take a week or two off. I kind of forget now during the year, but you're going to get 100 issues during the, the course of the year. And they're about 30 pages each. And at the end of each section, he's got a section on health, and it's a couple, three pages. And they, they'll pick up a, sub, a subject each week. <clears throat> so when, when we get down to where push comes to shove, we're not there yet, but when we get down to where push comes to shove and doctors and hospitals and insurance and all the rest isn't available to us, and we actually have to make some hard, fast decisions. You can forget Obamacare, because when the nation goes bankrupt, you're not going to have any money to be paying these doctors and Medicare and Medicaid anyway. What's going to happen with hyperinflation is we're all going to take it in the shorts, and we're all going to be bankrupted in the process. And we're all going to start over at zero COD, like it or lump it. That's the way it's going to be. And if you're sitting there saying, well, I'm already retired and I'm 78 years old, get ready to go back to work or doing something because that's what's going to happen. So I've been mentioning, you know, over the weeks and months, you might want to consider some open pollinated seeds for your front yard. Instead of growing grass out there and spending money to dispose of it, you might want some edible landscaping that you can actually eat. It'll, it'll help you a whole lot more. And the, and the idea that uh, you're going to be buying Krispy Kreme donuts and pies and cakes and, and utilizing all this sugar, I think, can come to an end. You know, for most of us it is, whether we like it or not. So I wanted to bring it to your attention. <clears throat> International Forecast, to remember, is, uh, is uh, the internationalforecaster.com. So if you're looking for their website, you go to the, that's www. Well, to check out our radio appearances, click here. Website. I think they've changed their website from theinternationalforecaster.com to www.intforecaster, F-O-R-E-C-A-S-T-E-R.com. Try that see what happens <clears throat> or go do a google search on them and i think you'll get a you'll get an address you got bob at intforecaster.com and you've got uh, for subscription and renewal information it's 160 dollars a year uh, cancel usa today time and newsweek and that'll give you the money you need to buy this it's it's worth 10 times more than the conventional mainstream publications anyway. Cost you about five cents a page. I just read you three pages here, and these three pages cost 15 cents. I can't think of a better place to spend 15 cents than on a story here that tells you, here's what sugar is, here's what it does to you. It's a poison. Disease is caused by starvation and or poison, toxicity. This is one of the poisons, not the only one, but it's one of them. The program you are listening to is 100% sponsored by you, the listener, on this First Amendment Rights Media channel. You will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network. There's a good reason for that. Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. So without your help, these programs cannot continue on satellite, Internet, or our several affiliates. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs. We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host, cause, and anywhere else the Spirit may lead you. Do all to the glory of our God and Creator for his holy nation, the only kingdom that will last forever. Thank you for listening.
We're talking about a time when there are no doctors. You won't have the money to pay for one, whether he's available or, uh, available or not. <clears throat> now, the International Forecaster, remember, is an economics newsletter. That's its primary function. And they comment on things like politics, elections, uh, the economy, uh, war, uh, editorials, uh, political satire. There's just a whole host and plethora of subjects that are covered here in the International Forecaster that are vital, that are interesting, that are necessary for us to know to make intelligent decisions. If you're getting your news from Brian Williams and Katie Couric, they give you about 75% uh, propaganda, 25% news. Mix the two together and keep you deceived about... Uh, Oh, 75% of the time, be my guess. In order to uh, cut through that deception, we need another source of information. So I recommend three newsletters. There's about 50 of them out there. They're all good, but uh, I can't subscribe to all of them. Don McElvaney is a great one. Gary North is a second one. James Cook is a third one. I mean, there's there's a lot of good guys out there. And, Sometimes somebody will tell me, you know, well, I get this newsletter or that one. And, and uh, so let me give you a couple, three addresses and a couple, three names here. The International Forecaster I put at the top of the list. And I do that because um, he's, the, he's the biggest and uh, probably covers the most ground, the most often. He's on the air. His name is uh, Bob Chapman. He's on radio constantly. You'll hear him as a guest on a number of, uh, of uh, talk shows. You've probably heard the name and number. His uh, his uh, word and his uh, mouthpiece here is called the International Forecaster dot com. And what I'm uh, zeroing in on this week is the health section at the end. And the health section at the end. Here's the second one over here for you. And it's called the Money Changer. And this guy, the Money Changer, Franklin Sanders, and I like Franklin. He puts out a paper once a month. And it's called the Money Changer. And uh, he's got good articles in here, good investment strategies, arbitrage. He's the guy that wrote the book on arbitrage between gold and silver. I just think uh, Franklin is uh, an all right good guy. And and uh, he's got a good head on his shoulders. That, that's what I appreciate, I think, most about these writers, is that uh, they've got they've got a good head on their shoulders, and they're they're giving us the news, the facts, the figures, the numbers that are between the lines that the other guys aren't giving us. That you and I probably wouldn't think of, you know, unless somebody told us ahead of time. Franklin Sanders and the Money Changer. You'll find them at uh, West Point, Tennessee. You can call him at 888-218-9226. Get that number down because I don't know what the price of this is. It's probably, I don't know, $50, $75 a year. It's worth every penny. I never got a bad issue of the Money Changer or the International Forecaster. And again, that number, 888, toll free, 888-218-9226. Are markets manipulated and does it matter? The Tropoplastic Theory of Cancer, a couple of articles just looking at one of his newsletters here. And then he's got fiat paper money in here and just, you know, just on and on. It's, it's very educational and, and as old as I am, I, I, I don't think I ever pick up an issue of these newsletters that I don't learn something. All right, with that out of the way, that's uh, two of them there. Let me see if i got a third one here. There's one I really like here, especially for new people coming into the game. It's called The Privateer. Let's see if i got a copy here on my desk. And they're down in Queensland, uh, Australia. Queensland, Australia. There's a fourth one over here, I'll, and I'll give a plug here for another guy here. His name is Joel Skousen. <clears throat> Joel Skousen. I don't have an address for him. I think if you look him up on the internet, oh, here it is, www.worldaffairsbrief.com. Yeah, you can get him right there. Get him online. 
This one comes over the internet, www.worldaffairsbrief.com. Yeah, it's about 10 pages. It comes out every week, every Saturday. And uh, Joel Skousen is the guy that wrote the book Strategic Relocation. He's written a number of other books, but <clears throat> that's the one that you'll know him by, Strategic Relocation. If you don't have a copy of that book, get one. <clears throat> It'll be worth uh, every, every nickel you spend on it. I don't know what this World Affairs Brief costs. <clears throat> These guys, they uh, send them to me so that I promote them for them, and I do. And um, the guy in Australia, just look up the privateer. Do a do a web search on him. The hyphen privateer dot com. And uh, his name is um, <clears throat> William Buckler. Now that privateer is a good economics newsletter because it's like I call that economics one oh one. He's a he's a great teacher better than these other guys. Bob Chapman, he writes a newsletter, and if you don't know what these uh, abbreviations stand for, well, you know, well, you're going to have to learn from the context of what you're reading. And half the time, I can't figure it out either. i gotta, I got to read the, the paragraph over again. But uh, the, the guy that writes the privateer, his name is uh, Buckler. Good teacher. Make sure he covers all the dots, dots the I's, crosses the T's. And if you're, you know, if you get out of the sixth or seventh grade, you'll be able to understand economics reading the privateer. Let me give you another story here in the second half of today's program here dealing with toxicity. Have you ever wondered if your body is harboring dangerous amounts of toxins? Are there any significant indicators that can help identify toxins or a specific toxicity? Now, wouldn't it be great if you could whip out a detoxic guide and look up a chart to see what symptoms match with toxicity and what you can do about it? A book like that would most likely put many medical professionals out of business. Diagnosing, after all, is their business. Then I have to ask, statistically, how many people successfully diagnose their problems? It would stand to reason that if licensed medical doctors can misdiagnose a patient, then why can't the patient find the cause of their condition and look for ways to resolve it? You know, the first thing that we have to be able to do is to figure out what in the hell is wrong with us. I mean, if you knew you had cancer, then we know what to, what to start treating or what to start doing something for. Now, there's a thing called aspartame disease, and it mimics. The, the symptoms are very similar to Parkinson's disease. And you go to the doctor, he says, oh, you got Parkinson's disease. Now, really what you've got here is aspartame poisoning. Check that one out first, aspartame poisoning. And once you've eliminated aspartame, you know, say you don't take any or you don't, don't uh, consume any, well, then maybe you do have Parkinson's disease. Now, 20% of the diagnoses that you get from a licensed medical practitioner are going to be false. You know, you got a lump in your breast, you go to the doctor, he takes a biopsy, he sends it in, he comes back, says, oh my God, you've got cancer. Then when they cut your left tit off, they find out that, no, it didn't have cancer in it after all. They made a misdiagnosis. Well, okay, things like that happen. You know, sometimes you go into the operating room and you've, you, they're supposed to cut off your left leg, but they make a mistake and they cut off your right leg. You go in to have one lung removed and, and it's the right lung, but they take out the left one, which was the good one, and the right one, which is the one that had the cancer in it, they left it in. Now, that's the stuff of malpractice litigation. But you know, hey, listen. The objective here is that we want to live. Now, did you want to win a malpractice suit for $5 million after you're dead, or did you want to live? I mean, that's the choice that you have to make here. Now, these guys screw up 20% of the time. That's one out of five. Now, in some cases, it's as high as 50%. There, there are some tests that are done that are notoriously, uh, notoriously at risk. And I don't know what they are off the top of my head here, but 
I was reading a paper came in here the other day, and I'm just going to pick one out. Let's take let's just take as an example. Maybe it's uh, prostate cancer. Maybe it's colon cancer. And half the time on that test, they give you a false positive. You know, they say, hey, you got it, but you really don't. Or vice versa. Or here's another thing that happens. Uh, down at the lab, these people working in the lab, you know, they're getting paid by the hour. Like the people that were building the Titanic. You know, the people that built the Titanic. The Titanic was turned out by the low bidder. Remember? The low bidder. <clears throat> All right. So these people working for the lab over here get paid by the hour. And sometimes they they get your test mixed up with Joe Padroni's test, you know, and so Padroni got your results and you got Padroni's results, but they got your name on his results and his name is on your results. And so he gets his back, it says, well, he doesn't have cancer and you get his back and it says you do have cancer. So they're out here cutting your lung out. Hell, you could do that while flipping a coin, 50 percent. So, again, you know, tuck that away in your heart. And let let the buyer beware, as they say, caveat em tour. Now, when we're talking about toxicity, it's the other half of the equation for sickness. Now, you're either being poisoned or you're being starved. And like as not, it's probably a combination of the two. Now, you can, you can diagnose yourself. I happened to be up in the hospital the other day, and I took a look at the stroke symptoms. And, then, and I took my boy in there the other day, and he had all four stroke symptoms. I read the stroke symptoms. I said, well, hell, that's what Dirk's got. Now, when they got through with him, he was in there for a couple, three days. When they got through with him, they said, no, he didn't have a stroke. And I said, well, now that's kind of funny. <clears throat> I, I was reading the chart out there in the hall, and it says, you know, you, <clears throat> you, you got these four symptoms. And he's got these four symptoms. We bring him in here. And you give him all these tests, and you come back and you say, nope, he, he, he didn't have a stroke. Well, maybe he didn't. We, we, we'd be happy if he didn't have a stroke. But, you know, when you're looking at these symptoms, you're trying to figure out, well, what in the hell is the matter with this guy? What, what's causing this? All right, now tuck that one away in your heart. <clears throat> That's why you should get a second opinion, maybe even a third, <clears throat> maybe even a fourth you know, by the time you get three or four opinions here as to what's wrong with you, if you get two or three of them that agree, well, you could be pretty pretty sure that that's probably the the, the, the problem. <clears throat> but you know, you and I can we can we can do a pretty good job of diagnosing ourselves or figuring out what's wrong with us. Now, here's a here's a thing here called uh, self help diagnosis. Before the economy went bad, people were hesitant to go to the doctor. Presently, the statistics show that over 50% of uh, people do not go to the doctor or go as a last resort. For example, one Internet survey stated that out of 2,000 adults, 38% of them evaluated and researched their condition themselves. And 48% said they correctly diagnosed their problem. Well, that's not too shabby. Half the people diagnosed themselves, and they got about a 50% rate, which is about <clears throat> as good as a medical doctor is going to get. 50% rate for many of the tests. Not all. I mean, some of them, you know, they're, they're pretty good at. <clears throat> but the moral to the story is they're not, they're, they're not bulletproof, and they make mistakes. And that's the, that's the stuff I said you know, a little earlier is made of uh, malpractice suits. Now, toxic indicators. There's some things here that we're eating that will give us an indication as to what in the hell is wrong with us. Let's take a look at some body gauges that can signal to us that there is an underlying problem. Something as benign as hives can be more important than just an immune system response. When your skin erupts with hives, which is characterized by intense itching, elevated welts, and patchy redness. That can indicate more than an allergic reaction to medications, such as barbiturate, or an infection or a bug bite like a mosquito. 
when you develop hives, it's a sign of a congestion of the capillaries, and the skin blotching is pressure that the skin cells are being emptied of blood supply in one area, and they're bleeding in another. And this can indicate a big problem. And it can be life-threatening, especially if there's a bullseye pattern to the skin. About 15% of Americans have hives at any given time. Now, when you develop hives, that's an indication then that you've got a toxic reaction. You can call it an allergy, but you're having a toxic reaction. You're being poisoned. Now, what is it that's poisoning you? Is it sugar? <clears throat> so there's medical treatment for hives. Hormones, antihistamines, or antibiotics may be prescribed depending on what is suspected of causing your hives. Now, if the hives are caused by physical exertion, trauma, or heat, then they disappear on their own. Other hives are reactionary to a toxin and the type of toxin and how the body handles that toxin or poison determines the severity of the hives. Most cases of hives resolve within a few hours. More severe cases may take days to clear up. Now, a symptom pain, for instance, <clears throat> gives you an indication something's wrong. I'm sitting here at my desk, and I don't have any pain in my stomach, but what if I got a pain here in my belly button? And what if that pain started to migrate down to my lower right side? See, those would be the symptoms of an appendicitis. Now, if I was constipated for three days prior to the pain developing, that's the second symptom that tells me, hey, we're dealing with appendicitis here. Now, the other day, we started off, and we said, well, what are you going to do with an appendicitis? When the doctor's available, you run off to the ER, he cuts it out. <clears throat> but 100 years ago or 1,000 years ago, before we had surgery, we had to solve that problem ourselves. And the way to solve that problem, there's a step one, step two, step three solution to curing that appendicitis. And that's a toxic reaction to constipation. It's a buildup of toxins in your body. Now, one of the herbal professors who had a clinic for many years told me that if the blood system and liver are healthy, and if they're clean, you will never have hives. Even from a bee sting, I asked? Yes, even from a bee sting. The sting of a bee or wasp irritates the system and creates a cascade of poisons causing large welts. And this can also happen if a person is allergic to certain foods or combinations of foods. Or if you eat these foods and then you get hives after physical exercise. Hives can be debilitating with swelling eyes, shudder swelling the airways. If this is the issue or if this is the tissue response, it is believed that there is too much acid in the blood system. A severe case of hives stems from having a congested bowel. Now, here's a true story. A friend of mine called me concerned about some swelling that she experienced after being stung by a wasp about an hour earlier. So she asked me to stop by and look at it. This individual had good common sense. And there had to be something wrong for her to phone me over a wasp sting. So when I got there, her wrist, where the bite originated, was significantly swollen, and the swelling was apparent up to her elbow. What was more alarming was a red streak coming from the bite itself, upper arm ending at her armpit. She was concerned that it was traveling to her heart. Now, her body was signaling obvious signs of blood toxicity. If something wasn't done, she'd wind up in the emergency room. So I gave her some immune-boosting and blood-cleansing herbs and applied an herbal poultice to the bite to draw out the toxins from the site. Then I also gave her some peppermint herb as an allergic and then to calm her stomach. I instructed her to apply ice on top of the herb poultice if it felt too hot. After two hours, she could wash off the poultice, at which time she called to report that the swelling, the red streak, and the pain were all gone. Now, that occurred in just two hours. Now, what are we doing here? 
we are removing the poison. We're going to neutralize that poison. So here's more toxic indicators. Another indicator that our system is overburdened and unable to adequately deal with toxins is called mucus. Our mucous membranes use a certain amount of mucus to protect cell surfaces. Mucous membranes produce a thin, slippery secretion made from water, sugar, salt, cells, and leukocytes uh, in a suspended fluid. This is a necessary mucus to protect your mucous membranes and should not be confused with the thick mucus that can accumulate on top of membrane cells. This mucus is a product of mucoid, which is a mucus produced with sugar protein and is essentially waste matter from an improper diet. It coats and bogs down the system, and mucus can accumulate, bringing about frequent episodes of respiratory ailments, such as bronchitis, pneumonia, and asthma, and upper tonsillitis, sinusitis, strep throat, ear infections, and several forms of dermatitis can also develop, like eczema and psoriasis. So here's some medical treatments. You name it, and it'll be given to you. Cause. <clears throat> Diets heavy with refined flour, processed sugar, and dairy create an overproduction of mucus waste matter. And it's recommended to switch to whole grain flour, use natural sugars, and use dairy substitutes. I might point out the raw milk will take care of that dairy substitute. And then this use of natural sugars. Have you ever tried honey? You know, honey is a natural sugar. You can't overdose on honey. Now, once you eliminate or significantly reduce the consumption of these foods, you can improve your immune system function and then reduce the occurrence of these types of medical conditions. In my mid-30s, I learned that cow's milk caused nearly all of my tonsillitis, sinusitis, eczema, and throat infections. I'd have these conditions in various combinations once or twice a year. Since getting off all cow milk and dairy byproducts, I seldom encounter these health problems. You know, that sounds like cutting off your left breast, ladies, to prevent um, <clears throat> breast cancer. You know, when God made milk, he made a good product, but he made it raw. And when we pasteurize milk, and it turns it into a toxin, turns it into a poison. So I agree. If if all you've got available to you is homogenized pasteurized milk, then pass. But if you can get whole raw milk, then you've got a natural food just like honey. That honey also has to have its enzymes. When you heat honey or milk above 132 degrees, you kill the enzymes. Without the enzymes, you can't digest it. And that's just real special. Now the Law Hour and Editorial Review brings you important information about law, science, education, politics, religion, health, history, economics, news, and current events. For more information about the Law Hour and Editorial Review, please visit our webpage at georgegordonlaw.org. Again, that's georgegordonlaw.org. The program you are listening to is 100% sponsored by you, the listener, on this First Amendment Rights Media channel. You will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network. There's a good reason for that. Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. So without your help, these programs cannot continue on Internet or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, we ask you to give. If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, we ask you to give. If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis, as if giving a tithe for missionary radio. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our Listen and Schedule pages on the Internet. Then, when you subscribe, 
we will send you the last quarterly MP3 CD of that program immediately and continue to do so with each new quarter. We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host, cause, and anywhere else the Spirit may lead you. Do all to the glory of our God and Creator, for His holy nation, the only kingdom that will last forever. Thank you for listening. silver is tremendously undervalued. Global demand vastly exceeds mine supply by more than 60% annually. There is little in the financial world more certain than a coming explosion in the prices of gold and silver. The U.S. dollar continues to lose value. Years ahead of the dominant media, FirstAmendmentRadio.com and FirstAmendmentRadio.net. A U.S. aircraft carrier is heading toward Yemeni waters to prepare to intercept any Iranian vessels carrying arms to rebels in Yemen. Saga Magani has the latest. The aircraft carrier Theodore Roosevelt is now steaming toward the area, part of a beefed-up Navy presence in response to reports an Iranian convoy is heading for Yemen, possibly carrying arms for Houthi rebels. Here at the Pentagon, Colonel Steve Warren says the region is tense. We believe that it's prudent uh, to ensure that we've got... um, Uh, the ability uh, to address any emerging threats that may come up. Officials won't speculate what the Navy vessels might do as the Iranian ships approach or what the response would be if Iran were to deny a request to board one of them. Sagar Megani at the Pentagon. A Messianic Jewish leader says the Minnesota Twin Cities are a ticking time bomb with many citizens in fear of radical Muslims who have an increasing presence in the area. Chad Groening has more. 
Authorities in Minnesota have charged six men they say attempted to travel to Syria to join the Islamic State terrorist group. A criminal complaint unsealed Monday charges the men with conspiring to provide and attempting to provide material support to a foreign terrorist organization. Authorities say a handful of Minnesota residents have traveled to Syria to fight with the terrorists in the past year. The six indicted men sought to reach countries near Syria by flying from the airports in San Diego and New York City, but were stopped. Jan Markell is founder and director of Olive Tree Ministries and host of Understanding the Times on American Family Radio. She says a disturbing number of Minneapolis